Have you ever felt excluded? Hi, I'm from Dan, Methodist Minister in Bognor Regis, Felton and Westergate. Throughout this month, I've been reflecting on some of the things I've been learning in lockdown and encouraging you to do the same. On the 1st of September 2016, we moved to Queen's Foundation in Birmingham, where I was to begin my training. As we'd only got a small second floor flat, the college also offered us a garage, and at first, we parked the car in it. On the 2nd of September 2016, we took a trip to the supermarket. We got back, we unloaded the car, and I shut the garage door. It was quite stiff um, and hard to shut, but I kept pushing, thinking, I must get some WD-40 for this until I realised that I'd never locked the car or shut the boot. I went to reopen the garage door to discover that the boot and the garage door were now hitting each other. I couldn't open the garage door beyond a few inches. In an hour of trying to solve this puzzle and get the car out, I met various other students and members of college staff. And their first introduction to me was seeing this stranger trying to break into a garage. Thinking back, I'm not surprised that some of those conversations started with some very suspicious looks. Eventually, I managed to break through the top gap of the door, get some rope tied to the car boot and then reach through the bottom gap and pull the car boot down to be able to then get the garage door open. The car boot had a few scratches, but at least I had got access. Before lockdown, my experience of church communities is that our default way of people accessing church was by attending a church building. Within these buildings, we hold services of worship, community drop-ins, coffee mornings, prayer groups and Bible studies, toddler groups and quiz nights. But as lockdown came in, access to all these things was stopped. Our buildings were locked. As part of the nationwide effort to reduce physical gathering and push the spread of COVID-19 down. So during lockdown, our default way of accessing church by gathering in a church building was suddenly blocked from us. Just like my car was when I foolishly shut the garage door. I want to reflect briefly on two things that have come out of this. Firstly, creativity. Utilising the post, email, phone, blog posts, YouTube, video and telephone conferencing and more. Creatively, we've developed different ways of people being able to engage with church without the building church without walls, to be a scattered church. And secondly, there's been a greater sense of self-responsibility. What do I mean? Well, I mean that because accessing church has not been about gathering in a building, individuals have had loads more opportunity and responsibility themselves as scattered church for nurturing their faith and relationship with God. The format has moved from what could perhaps slightly crassly be described as a passive attendance to active engagement. People have had their own space and freedom and responsibility to choose how to engage, how to be church. And not only that, people who for one reason or another were much more cut off from the worshipping community for example they live in care homes or they work on Sundays or they care for relatives they now felt that they were included and connected to the worshipping and spiritual life of the church community in ways they never did before. In the Gospels, we read the familiar story of people bringing to Jesus children for him to bless them. The disciples try to stop it. Children, it seems, didn't matter. But Jesus rebukes them and says, let them come to me. The kingdom of God belongs to them too. It is a passage that's often used within infant baptism that vulnerable, innocent children are welcomed by Jesus. But I wonder if we take a step back from the story itself and see it in the light of Jesus's wider ministry, healing the blind and crippled, spending time with tax collectors and zealots, the excluded and the vulnerable. This passage may take on even more meaning for us. 
I wonder if this passage might challenge us as worshipping communities to reflect ourselves on where we might, intentionally or unintentionally, be excluding people from being a greater part of the community. Lockdown has forced me to look differently at church communities and makes me wonder if we may have fallen into the trap of letting buildings become too central to our common life together and how it unhelpfully and unfairly excludes those who for one reason or another can't access it. But it's also shown me that there are simple ways to begin to redress that balance and build a more accessible and inclusive community. That there are ways access can be achieved for those who are currently excluded. In part, by having a little less focus on our buildings and a little more on discerning how best to connect with people where they are, not where they're not with our focus all the time on the kingdom of God. And it's also shown me the fruit that is born when individuals have more active self-responsibility for their worship and their spiritual life. So what may all this mean for the future? I sense a strong challenge from God, challenging us not to build up our walls in a way that they keep people out but to build up one another in a way that allows us to bring people in. What walls may we need to allow God to break down so that we can grow into a more inclusive and active community that keeps the kingdom of God at the centre?